Hello everybody, it's um, Pastor Giselle here um, from Pearls of Grace Ministries, Sidoni and the lovely Ngum. Um, again, it's another Thursday night mm -hmm. and we are back to have one of our little discussions. And this week we thought we would discuss the topic of being born again. Um, this is pretty much one of the fundamental things of being a Christian. Um, the whole idea of being born again and I think you know um, it stems from in the bible the term born again stems from that conversation Jesus has with Nicodemus doesn't it in John 3 um, I don't know Giselle have you got a bible to hand uh, sort of kind of sort of kind of yeah uh, um, yeah I have hold on a wee second because I know that Bible that passage is well sort of it's well known and it's well quoted mm -hmm. um, you know mm -hmm. when Nicodemus asked Jesus how can I be born again I'm, I'm an old man do I does it mean I need to enter into my mother's womb this is me rough you know mm -hmm. loosely paraphrasing does it mean I need to enter back into my mother's womb and be born a second time that's not possible um and then Jesus replies to him you know that you must be born of the water and of the spirit um, mm -hmm. to enter the kingdom of God so whilst Giselle just finds that it's just yep. you know this whole idea of being born again um we're going to be discussing sort of what does that, what does that mean um and then secondly what does it signify um when someone says they're born again mm -hmm. um and and perhaps ultimately is there another way um to heaven without being born again and um, because obviously we're aware that there's this sort of new age um new sort of postmodern theologies going around about you know the almost kind of there's the many ways to skin a cat um and say so are there many routes to heaven without necessarily being born again so we're just going to have those that sort of conversation um and set the record straight from our perspective which um by the grace of God, will be a biblical perspective as well. Um, Giselle, have you found it? You take it away. Yes. Do you want me to read the whole chapter or just really from where Jesus says, Verily, I say unto you? No, just read that conversation between Nicodemus and Jesus because I think that Nicodemus's question would be um, That's true. Sort of okay. what, what a lot of atheists or a lot of non Christians looking in would be there, asking of the there. church or of, of Jesus. There you go. Well, then that starts at verse one, as you say, John three and, and mm -hmm. one. It's after dark one evening, a Jewish religious leader named Nicodemus, a Pharisee, came to speak with Jesus. Teacher, he said, we all know that God has sent you to teach us your miraculous signs are proof enough that God is with you. Jesus replied, I assure you, unless you are born again, you can never see the kingdom of God. What do you mean, exclaimed Nicodemus? How can an old man go back into his mother's womb and be born again? Jesus replied, the truth is no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and the spirit. Humans can reproduce, human, uh, can reproduce only human life, but the Holy Spirit gives new life from heaven. Mm. that's powerful it's, isn't it it's just powerful yeah and that was um, from an nlt version by the way okay right. very modern. yeah and, um, just whilst you were reading that actually that struck me that you know nicodemus was a pharisee yeah um, and so he was very religious and so we mustn't discount perhaps people that were brought up in a christian context um but aren't necessarily born again 
because that's the sort of people that um, Nicodemus was. You know, yep. he, he knew all about religion, but he wasn't mm -hmm. born again, and he was looking for what it means to be born again. So, if you are, um, if you fall under that umbrella, and you're listening to us now, then welcome to the chat and welcome to the camp because you're just the sort of person that Nicodemus was looking for that answer that Jesus gives. Exactly. Um, and say, so, yeah, you know, I'm just going over to you. When when you hear of, because I know, you know, you're, um, you know, you, I'm sure you won't mind me saying this, but you're probably relatively new to the faith or, or being born again than, than we are. When you heard of the term being born again before you became born again, what did that mean to you? And then did that change once you become, once you became born again? And, and sort of where that transition for you, what did that look like? pre and post being oh born again? That's a very interesting question because, you know, I was probably in Nicodemus' state for a long time. You know, I was raised in the Catholic Church. I was baptized as a kid, you know, went to Mass almost every Sunday. So, yeah, I knew that I knew God. You know, I always believed in God. There was no question about that. But I remember um, when I was growing up, I think for anyone who, you know, you don't know me, I'm from Cameroon. And so when we were growing up, I think born again became a synonym for the Pentecostal movement, right. which really came into um, my country in like the 70s, I think. So the sort of Catholic, Presbyterian and Baptist churches had been the most established Christian communities, you know, pretty much, mm -hmm. you know, Orthodox, very similar. And then P Pentecostals came with this kind of more radical approach, right? Mm -hmm. They were doing things very differently and a lot of people didn't really understand. And a lot of people balked at it, if I'm honest. Mm -hmm. So I think, and I think they were the ones really pushing this, you have to be born again. So mm -hmm. born again then became a synonym, a synonym for Pentecostals, mm -hmm. a crazy Pentecostals. Mm -hmm. So I remember like in Cameroon, and there are still people probably think that. I am saying these things because I don't know where this um, podcast is going to end, right? Mm -hmm. If you're from any country like that, um, you know, in, in Cameroon, we used to hear people, I'll say it in Pigeon and I just say, I don't join born again church, or they'll say you don't join church. It literally meant you have become part of the born again church, right? <laughs> <laughs> born again. So it was almost seen as a denomination, right? Mm -hmm. And there were very negative connotations to it, I think, because a lot of time people felt like, oh, these people now want to act holier than thou, but you know, because some people knew these people before they became born again. Maybe mm -hmm. they didn't live very holy life, you know. Mm -hmm. There was always an impression of, and I'll say with women in particular, like women who had lived, right? They had mm -hmm. done whatever. They had dated men, maybe had abortions or whatever. And then mm -hmm. at some point they gave their lives to Christ. So people would be like, yes, you know, when life has frustrated you now, you think you know Jesus more than anybody else. Mm -hmm. But, you know, and I, I, I won't lie. I used to be one of those people. I used to look at some people and think, huh. You know, back in the day, you used to live. You know, what are you going to mm -hmm. tell me about? And I remember once saying to somebody, you know, I've noticed about these born-again people. Almost everybody who goes to this born-again church, as I would say, has had some kind of trauma in their lives. Mm -hmm. So I, I felt like it was some kind of therapy. I right. wouldn't lie. Mm -hmm. but, you know, after I became born-again myself, and I tell mm -hmm. you to refer to myself as born-again, it wasn't as it wasn't so strange. It became a very natural thing for me to say, mm -hmm. given that I always thought this was you know, a weird thing. Mm -hmm. But what I used to see in those people as, oh, you're just frustrated with life and looking for last resort, I now understand to be brokenness. Mm -hmm. So, and I think to myself, we're better, right, than at the feet of Jesus. Mm -hmm. And I remember a friend of mine complaining because his brother had gone to uni and, you know, became part of this church. And he was just complaining, like, my brother has come back home with this strange religion and everything. And I just said, well, at least it's better than taking drugs, <laughs> you know. Mm -hmm. So to mm -hmm. <laughs> me, it was mm -hmm. like, okay, this is it's not that great, but it's not, you know. So I, I think for me, it's, I like that you started with Nicodemus because when I used to hear that thing, that, that reading, you know, it was read in the in the church when I was going to the mm -hmm. Catholic church as a young person. I used to always think, oh, what's that? What's that about? Like, it just didn't make sense to me, right? Mm -hmm. But I think when I myself had a very interesting born again experience, mm -hmm. um, I read it again, and I thought, my goodness, this has got to be one of the most beautiful pieces of dialogue I've ever read. 
mm. from a spiritual and just a literary perspective. So I really feel that being born again is really something that is revealed to you by the spirit because, you know, you can try to know God intellectually and there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. Mm. You know, God will reveal himself to whatever, but I still feel that even for the most theologically sound, whatever, even if God is going to reveal himself to you intellectually, there has to be a touch of the Holy Spirit in it. Mm. That is suddenly a conversation that you need to be born again of the spirit. You know, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. No because I, 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 that was a reading that I was very familiar with, and it never really used to make sense to me. Like, yeah, and like it just didn't make sense to me. But mm. the minute I received the Holy Spirit, I was like, wow, this is it. Mm -hmm. It's a mm -hmm. spiritual thing. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. something mm -hmm. that, yeah, it took 40 years for this to click, but it did. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Jesus has said that flesh gives birth to flesh, um, and the Spirit gives birth to the Spirit. I mean, Giselle. As a pastor, um, when you have people talk talk about you know being born again, um, what does that what does that mean? Or when you say to people that unless you know I have heard some pastors say this, unless you're born again, you will not enter the kingdom of God. Um, what does that what does that mean? What would you as a pastor? What would you want people? What knowledge of being born again would you want people? Would you want to impart on people um, that they understand? Because like Gum says. Um, sometimes it is covered in a negative connotation mm -hmm. because people kind of look at it as kind of a denomination or they're beginning to act like they're holier than now when really mm -hmm. underneath all of that what people are actually seeing is an outward show of an inward transformation that is happening mm -hmm. That's so, you know, whereas maybe people used to be I don't know you know loose or cursing or, or whatever and then all of a sudden they're just a bit more refrained a bit more restrained <laughs> The, the, the spirit is working in there so i know sometimes it can have a negative connotation but as yeah. a pastor when you hear born again what would you want people to understand by that term that it's all about the change just as you said mm. it's all about change if you say you're born again and your life hasn't changed from your adulterous affairs your gambling your night clubbing your over drinking you're taking mm. drugs and then you're not born again you haven't let the holy spirit come in and transform you change you from the inside out mm -hmm, mm -hmm. um and unless people see change mm. they're not going to believe that you mm. are born again mm -hmm. and without change i'll just say it, you're not born again mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. the holy spirit will not live in a dirty dwelling no. <laughs> and to be born again, you did ask, didn't you? Come on. <laughs> and to be. <laughs> oh, gee. Well, it's right. It's right, isn't it? You know, the Holy Spirit is not going to live, it's not going to operate through someone who is mm. out doing all those worldly things. Like, yeah. does that mean that we have to sit, as you say, and be like holier than lie and you know, oh mm. no, I never got up to any no good? No, mm. it's not. Admit that what you once were and that Jesus saved you and the Holy Spirit has transformed you. Yes, that is just so yeah. perfect because I, you know, and, and, and part of this, you know, for me anyway, is that realization that at the point when you become again romans 3 23 comes into mind you know for all have seen and, and, and fallen short of the of the glory of god and mm -hmm. um you know the bible also says that the wages of sin is death yep. um and so if we've all seen then we all deserve death um, mm -hmm. but jesus comes for us and and for the you know to die to take away that punishment for us mm -hmm. and to the born again christian or the born again mind there's that realization that you are a sinner or that i am a sinner mm -hmm. and there's that realization that what i deserve is death um but god loves me so much that he sent his only son um that whosoever will believe in him yes um, shall not perish but have eternal life and so jesus dies jesus takes that punishment of death that i deserve for my sin mm -hmm. um just so that i can have eternal life so 
my rebirth um, being born again in the spirit um, it's, it's re being rebirthed into eternal life through Jesus Christ yes yes and um, you know second Corinthians 5 17 says therefore if anyone is in Christ he is a new creation the yeah. old has passed away behold behold I like that I really oh, like that <laughs> word in there because it just you know it doesn't just say the new has come it says behold exactly yeah you yeah. look at it it's something to be marveled at um and so you know you're quite right as well when you say it's that outward working or manifestation of an inward uh -huh. um transformation that's going on um but here's, you know, here's the thing. We get people who um, kind of say, yes, you know, um, but we can, you know, there are many ways to go to heaven. You know, we, we hear this all the time, don't we, especially in the Greek, you know, we have people trying to infiltrate us and, and mm -hmm. you know, bring in different doctrines. Um, Giselle, I'll come to you first. How many ways are there to get to heaven? How many ways are there to be saved? <laughs> One. One and one only. End off. <laughs> That's it. Jesus himself says in the scriptures, mm. I mm. am mm. the way to the Father, that no man cometh to the Father except through me. But mm -hmm. it doesn't say you can get to heaven through me and through doing good works and through paying lots of money and through doing all you want to do. He does not say that. He says... <laughs> I am the way, the truth, and the light. That's mm. it. End off. Yeah. Yep. And you make a good point now because Titus 3 5 says, He saved us not because of works done by us in righteousness. Yes. But according to his own mercy, by the yes. washing of regeneration and renewal of the Holy Spirit. Exactly. Um, you know, 1 Peter 1 3 says, Blessed be God the Father. Be God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. According to his great mercy, he has caused us to be born again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. So Amen. That sort of, you know, takes me into like the second part. It sounds here like the resurrection is tied to being born again. Yes. Yes, you know, absolutely. And, and, yeah. And so... When you think about that, how does that speak to you? Um, you know, how does that speak to you with Jesus being resurrected and, and you almost being resurrected again from your, you know, it says we're, we're slaves to sin, but we're no longer slaves to sin, yeah. aren't we? Yeah. How does that speak to you? Is, you know, when you became born again, did you find and experience that freedom that the scripture does say, a living hope, an eternal oh my God. hope? I don't think, I think I need these scriptures to go back because this is literally, you know, when they say the word of God becomes flesh, these things literally played out in my life. And I didn't know that, you know, I wasn't, you know, I had a good news Bible in this house and I wasn't reading it mm. like that. Okay? Mm. But I think for me, the resurrection part is really important because first you see that Jesus is kind of like the first principle of resurrection. And then mm. we all kind of follow, right? Mm. In the sense that he's the first to resurrect into eternal life. We know mm -hmm. that people were all then, but mm -hmm. it was never, you know, for you to gain eternal life. And I think it's really important for us to understand that because it's only now that you're speaking that I'm realizing, hey, this born again thing isn't just so that, you know, you're protected from the devil. It's really about the ultimate plan, right? Mm -hmm. Eternal life. And so for me, I really feel that before I became born again, you know, I was one of those people who thought, yeah, there are many ways to heaven. I'm not going to lie. You know, I was like, okay, I was raised Christian. And yeah, okay, yeah, Christianity is good too. But, you mm -hmm. know, I think other religions are fine. Mm -hmm. And I used to be, I mean, I'm sure if you track down my old Facebook post, you see some <laughs> arguments with people. <laughs> I remember when somebody wrote, I was like, this man, Christians are too arrogant. Who do you mm -hmm. think you are? You know, you're not the only people who know God. And I mm -hmm. sincerely thought so, right? I really believe, like, I felt like if God is powerful enough to create this world with diverse cultures and things why can't he also create many ways to him 
that was my argument, right? right. To me, I felt like all these born again Christians were actually challenging the omnipotence of God. So you right. could not tell me that I was not on God's side. My argument okay. was logical. I was like, if God can do everything, why is it so difficult for him to say, okay, you, you're from here. Come to me this way. Come to me that way. So it wasn't me trying to be difficult. I was just like thinking, okay, if God is omnipotent, he can do all these things. Mm. But, you know, and so the, because I was not really a big Bible reader, people would say, yes, mm. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and life. I'm like, yeah, but that's only one book, you know. But I think mm. for me, that played out in my life, you know, my whole experience of coming to Christ. I literally found myself in a position where I, my back was against the wall. So for mm. other people, right, this might be theory. For me, it was a reality because mm. when I stood there with all the difficulties that I was having and I needed somebody to pray for me, to help mm. me because I was just having too many spiritual attacks, it was literally a desperate move. And this person said to me, um, are you, what did she say? I said, so are you a Christian or whatever? I said, well, I was raised in the Catholic church. I was like, no, that's not the point here. The thing mm. is, the things that you're dealing with, only Jesus can get you out of there. Mm. That for me was the moment. It was a very practical thing because mm -hmm. it was not this person, that person. Mm -hmm. And at that moment, I don't even really think I believed it. I was just like, man, I'm too stressed. Okay, Jesus, if you can solve this problem, come and solve mm. it. But yeah. Yeah. the fact that I just said those, like, I just said, okay, yes, Jesus, just come come and troubleshoot for me but mm -hmm. then he actually showed up I was like wow mm -hmm. okay and mm -hmm. it wasn't just that like I literally saw the raw power of God that day I fell under the power of the Holy Spirit I got mm -hmm. baptized in the Holy Spirit that same day I was like what on earth is this like mm -hmm. this was a very supernatural experience I've never experienced anything like that mm -hmm. so for me it wasn't just oh this woman is just saying it no mm -hmm. Jesus literally showed up and saved me that day. So for me, yeah. it's a very real thing. It's a very practical thing. It may yeah. not be as dramatic for everybody, but I just believe that when God touches you to become a born again person, whatever that experience is, it will become very real to you. Yeah. And uh, I, you, know, yeah. you made some interesting points there because, um, you know, the idea of being born again, you know, when we think of birth, we think of being born you're born into something aren't you you're born into a family you're born mm -hmm. into a family and so ergo you're then born into an inheritance whether or not you get it is you know completely different yeah. you're born into um uh so so if you're born into a family you're then born into whatever cultures and tradition and, and heritage is that family mm -hmm. encompasses mm -hmm. um, and so you know John 1, 12, it says, but to all who did receive him, who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. Um, this doesn't put a limit on race, skin, ethnicity, no. um, tribes, nothing like that. Um, verse 13 says, who were born, so this is us who've been born in the spirit, not of blood, nor um, of the will of the flesh. I think some version says, nor of the will of a man, yeah. um, nor the will of a man, but of God. So um, by believing in the Son, Jesus Christ, we become children of God. Um, and so we inherit all that God wants for us to inherit here on earth and, mm. and, and in the afterlife, after we die. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, being born again, we're born into God's family. Um mm -hmm. And we become brothers and sisters within the body of Christ. Yes. And I know that some people, especially post-COVID, um, there's a real sort of, and, and, it, and it's been great because technology has helped us to get the, the, the gospel far and wide. Um, yeah. And COVID has meant that we have used technology a lot more. Yes. But there's also something to be said about the brotherhood and the sisterhood um, within your local church, within mm -hmm. the body of Christ. Um, and, and that experience of being born again, I would encourage anybody who's perhaps a new Christian or struggling to join a local church, Bible-believing church, Amen. because you will really have that feeling of being born into a family, being mm -hmm. born again into a family, when you can stand hand in hand with a brother or a sister um, on a Sunday morning or a Thursday evening 
or whatever service it is you decide to go to. Um, and so I think you know that's 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 very important that sense of family. Um, yes. And I think it's down to each and every single one of us as Christian brothers and sisters to cultivate and maintain that sense of family and brotherhood and sisterhood within the church. Um, and, you know, I'll put that to one side because that's something we, we I'm completely passionate about, hence the group. Um, but she's not coming back to you. When we look at, I've got here, we look at, you know, being born again is, it says here that we are that we then become um, children of God. I think in the in the Bible it also says um, we become joint heirs to the kingdom of God. And for me, that is just mind blowingly amazing because I think that if I if I am joint heir with Jesus to the Father's kingdom. And he made the heavens and the earth in six days. My inheritance is pretty decent. I don't really care. There's, there's no earthly father can give me the kind of inheritance that I'm being born into with this born again movement. I mean, uh, oh, sorry, as a pastor, Giselle, what does that, you know, what does that speak to you of? Um, and also just as a Christian, you know, just that idea that you are a joint heir with Jesus Christ to the inheritance of the kingdom. It makes me feel like total royalty. <laughs> Check her out. We need a crown. Seriously. I don't want to cry. When, when I get to heaven, I know my crown is ready for me and there are many jewels in my crown. I know that. And I look forward. All my all 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 my wealth is stored up in heaven for me, because you know my heavenly Father is the King of Kings. Amen. Amen. Yeah, Amen. and what what a wonderful thing to look forward to. You've heard Amen. me say often enough that in my the days before I became born again, Amen. I was reasonably wealthy, Amen. and. Uh, Everything my little heart desired, you know, fancy cars, fancy holidays, fancy mm -hmm. everything. And um, since becoming born again, I gave that whole life up and everything. Financially, mm -hmm. this is the poorest I have ever been in my life. But mm -hmm. it's the most rewarding mm -hmm. with peace, actual peace. And that mm -hmm. deep-seated joy that only comes from having the Holy Spirit uh, living mm -hmm. in me. Mm -hmm. And I know that my whole reward that when I get to heaven, I know that my Lord Jesus has gone ahead and prepared the mansion for me. Hallelujah. That's oh, it. Your father's mansion. Yep, oh, that's, that's, yep, that's it. Exactly. There are many rooms. That is just so many wonderful. rooms. And that's what we've got to look forward to. We're yeah. non-believers don't have that to look forward to no. our our hope is in jesus we yeah. know that either if we are called home to glory today yeah. or the rapture happens we mm -hmm. know where we're going to we're going and what to lies ahead of us yeah. unbelievers don't they don't have that certainty no. they only have no. uncertainty yeah. uh, that's not a good way to live sad, isn't it to, to, yeah. to live a life without hope to live yeah. a life that yeah. is finite or finite if you're american to, to, to live a life that ends if, if you if you live long you live 150 if, if yeah. you live long, i mean i don't know how old the, the the oldest person on earth is but if you really push the boat 123. out 123 right okay so if you really push the boat out and, and added a, you know three decades extra to that you mm -hmm. could live to 150, right? But yep. that's still a very finite life. Yeah, it's a speck. It's, it's not even as big as a speck of sand. No. And yeah. that's just mm -hmm. life without hope. That's just a life that everything you labour and toil for is gone when you're gone. There's nothing yeah. more to look forward to. And so, you know, I would very much invite those who are on the outside looking in to investigate this born again business to investigate oh, yeah. Jesus Christ and investigate and get to know who he is for themselves um 
Mm. If only for purely selfish reasons, because you don't want your life to end here on earth. If only because you just think there, mu- there must be something after this life that is so enticing. Um, and either these people that are following Jesus are absolutely mad, or you who's <laughs> on the outside is absolutely mad. But I've put, I put this challenge to you to investigate it. And, 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 and if you approach it with an open heart, Jesus will reveal himself to you. Amen. Um, yeah. If you approach it with an open heart, he will reveal himself to you. Um, you know, and just coming back to, you know, backtracking a little bit, Isabel, um, Matthew 7, 21 says, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only the one who does the will of my father who is in heaven. Um, I have heard of some people say, and, you know, and, and some people have come to me and said, is it possible for somebody to be born again and not change or um, still carry on living in sin? Or, you know, so I put this to you, Giselle, as the pastor in the room, you know, um, is it possible to be born again and not change? Nope. <laughs> Next question. That was the, the very definite answer. That's it. Is, don't we, G? We hear, we hear of, you know, people go, oh, I'm born again and, you know, but I just can't help myself or, you know, I'm going to get forgiven or the grace of God is, you know, is abundant. Yes. And it's abundant. I'm glad you said that, Sidoni. You know. I'm glad you said that because I think maybe um, if something that's what you or Giselle were talking about it, I think, Let's talk about grace, the abuse of grace, because I feel like sometimes people think that because you you said the sinner's prayer, it's now you, it's like you've got this pass, right? And regardless of what you do, God will always let you in. In fact, I say this because I've heard somebody, or it's probably more than one person, a Christian, defend abortion in a situation and say, you know, it was a very difficult situation basically. And the person was like, Oh, let the person have an abortion and go back and repent. I'm like, huh? Oh, oh. You know. So I think maybe people don't quite understand this part. Mm-hmm. Giselle, you go on, you you explain essentially what it is the abuse of grace. Um you know, because sin there is consequence for sin. Yeah, there is. And with, and with the consequences of our sin, it does mean spiritual death, but it mm. also can mean physical death as well. Mm. And, you know, I always think of the oh, the secular song by, uh, oh, I've forgotten the girl's name, Brittany Spears. And mm. the line was, whoops, I did it again. Yes. You know, that's abusing grace. Mm. That They think that they can go to church on a Sunday and, oh, I'm sorry, I repent of my sins, and they go out on Monday or they go out even on Sunday night and they start doing it all over again. No, that is not being born again. I said at the top of this that if you don't change, you're not born again. I actually will, I will face-to-face question anybody if there's no change in you. Your character is. You're not born again because there has to be a change of heart. There mm-hmm. has to be a change of mind and there has mm-hmm. to be a change of your emotions. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You cannot be born again and still live your old life. And if anybody wants to take me to task over that, come on. Come on. She's ready. Come on. Bring it on. Bring it on. Bring it on. <laughs> right. Because you're yeah. right. I think I remember somebody saying repentance isn't just about saying, oh, I repent. Repentance is really about change. Right. So what about somebody who, let's say, before they became born again, they were pretty, you know, they had sort of like a, a promiscuous lifestyle, right? And then they meet Jesus, they're like, wow, you know, I need to change and everything. And then what if that person is still, they really want to serve Jesus and everything, but somehow they keep feeling this pull to go back to their lifestyle and sometimes they fall for it. What's going on with that person and how can they really be, you know, adhere to their faith? Okay, so here's my take on it. I think there's there's twofold, right? We have to always remember that repentance, and you know, the Bible's clear, we must worship God in spirit and in truth. Repentance is 
predominantly and fundamentally a function of the heart. If you are truly deeply sorry for your sinful nature, and, 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 and this is sinful nature, and what does sinful nature mean? Sinful nature means you cannot help but sin. Mm -hmm. um, sinful nature means that is our predisposition whilst we're in these earthly bodies and in on earth in these vessels right now the grace of god um and the holy spirit is there to help us to either convict us when we sin or like we say in the lord's prayer lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil mm -hmm. okay so it's it's there that when we do fall into temptation it will convict us to repent and, and, and when we fall into temptation, we do so unknowingly. So if you knowingly sin, you're taking the mickey. Yeah. <laughs> then, mm -hmm. then your heart hasn't been, your heart hasn't been transformed. Because mm -hmm. if, if you sin without contrition and you knowingly sin without contrition, then like, I, I'm with Giselle on that. I, I, I'll ask you if you really have been to okay mm -hmm. now if you, if you sin unknowingly you know the holy spirit's there to lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil if you sin unknowingly and you confess your sins which we are told in the bible to confess our sins mm -hmm. um then the grace is there because god knows that our earthly nature is that we will fall into temptation mm -hmm. now if you know that your previous life was a promiscuous life and you you try and you pray and you ask God to, to turn away from that. I truly believe that he will. I truly believe that he will. It, it, it might not be instant. Mm -hmm. It might take a while. Mm -hmm. um, so his thing, you know, justification um, at the moment when you say that the sinner's prayer, that's instant. You know, mm -hmm. you, you accept Christ in exchange, you know, for his grace and you get the pardon. But sanctification mm -hmm. is a process. Mm -hmm. Yeah yeah you know so and and, and it, it, it's a process that pretty much lasts our whole life because we're not perfect and we're not righteous mm -mm. yeah absolutely. Um, but every day we should be further away from our sin and closer to amen righteousness mm -hmm. okay and, amazing and if, you are, if you've been on this journey for 20 years and you are your life does not look like you've been on this journey for 20 years then you seriously need to start asking the questions did i really ever really believe exactly exactly like carlos has just put a good point here in the chat he said repentance in the greek means turn around aha uh -huh. yeah okay so that's it you do have to turn around now mm -hmm. you you so Donny, I, I hear what you're saying about someone take take a young woman mm -hmm. and uh, she becomes born again, but then she slips back into going out night clubbing and sleeping with guys and this, that, and the other thing. Um, yeah, God will forgive her if she if she truly, truly, mm -hmm. truly wants to change her ways. Mm -hmm. But what I feel about a lot of people who come to Christ, become mm -hmm. born again, but you don't see any change in them. Mm -hmm. Either they're not going to church. Or they're in the wrong church. Yes. Yeah. And if they're in the wrong church, they're not getting good, solid teaching. They're mm -hmm. not getting the true gospel. And well, probably the pastor or the church leaders is committing adultery and doing all sorts of things. So it's not always the person's fault. Yeah. Yeah. Also as well, I feel like sometimes they're hot because, you know, you know, when you love somebody and you just can't bear to hurt them. Mm -hmm. You know, there's, there's that one, say for example, a parent figure or a parent in your life. Some people just cannot bear to disappoint their, their parents, their mom, no. their dad, mm -hmm. their older siblings, yeah. whoever, whoever mm -hmm. they love that. You know, it's, it's that kind of, I mean, you know, the first commandment is that we should love the Lord our God with all our hearts and with all our souls and with all our minds and with everything that we've got. And it's that kind of yeah. love. Where you love him so much that you do not want to disappoint him yes. and, and i feel like sometimes um people perhaps don't take it as seriously as they should mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. and and they, they perhaps feel like 
like Giselle said, whoops, I did it again. Yep, true. And it's like, did you really love him as much as he loves you yep. in the first instance? Yeah. Were you really trying to not sin? Or did you just go, oh, yeah, by the way, I'll just do it again. And I'll yeah, you me yeah. anyway. <laughs> and I think sometimes we have to think about it as, as a function of the heart, this, this being born again business. Um, it, it's got to come from deep down within us. Mm -hmm. from our spirit and like Giselle said you know if there's got to be a renewal of the mind mm -hmm. um, the mind you know the Bible's clear it says um, Philippians 2 5 which is probably one of my favorite Bible verses when it says let the mind of Christ that was let the mind that was in Christ be oh, in yeah. you mm -hmm. and I can't even begin to the, 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 the thought of the mind of Christ being yeah. in you yeah oh man you would mind. just be walking on water <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, but that's the sort of thing when your mind is transformed or your mind is being transformed and, you know, your will is being transformed to the fact that you start praying, let thy will be done mm -hmm. in my life, not as I wish it, but as you want, Father. And then mm -hmm. you get closer to God, then, you know, you, your mind and then your emotions you're no longer, a, you know, the old has passed away. You're now a new creation in Christ yeah. Jesus. Mm -hmm. And, you know, Ephesians says, let no slanderers um, talk or rage or anger or bitterness come out of you. Then your emotions start being Begin changed. to change, yeah. So it's not a, a one-day thing. It's not an instantaneous thing. But no. it is a, pro it's, it's a, it's a process. Yes. But it's a process that we must see results um, as, we, as you go on in that journey. And if we don't, then like Giselle said, then you really must start questioning, did you repent? Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And you, if, if we truly open up to the Holy Spirit, it will happen a lot quicker. You know, Don't fight the Holy Spirit. You know, we, can't, mm. we can't walk with God and hold hands with the devil. You can't. No. You, you've, got, you've got to be in one camp or the other. You can't straddle both. Yeah. So you know, turn away from it all. Let mm. the Holy Spirit work work in you change you mm -hmm. and it's all fine yeah. it is quarter past 10 ladies we were going to finish earlier can you just um say to people if anybody who's listening to us because at the moment we've got i think pretty close to three thousand listeners on our podcast yeah if anybody who um, comes across this is listening and is either a nicodemus in the sense that they've been within the Christian context and they want to be born again um, or they're an atheist and they're listening in and they want to be born again can you just just tell them how to do that and just explain the sinner's prayer to them and mm -hmm. how they can do that okay. um, and also how they can maybe reach you um, or the website um, just for, for further help just so they know well that was the first thing I was going to say was that as Sidonia has said if anybody wants to become born again First and foremost, you can contact us through uh, Christian Women in the UK, which is uh, www.cwinuk, which is Christian Women in UK, dot org. And um, we will certainly speak with you. Uh, you can email us from there. If you let us have a number, we'll call you back and we will definitely speak with you and talk you through it it's a very simple process and all you really got to do you can even do it by yourself but if you do it by yourself make sure you speak with your mouth that you are born again that you are a christian because mm -hmm. you've got to confess it with your mouth mm -hmm. and to, it is a very simple process there's no particular prayer in the bible uh for repentance a lot of faith say uh, uh it's mumbo jumbo saying the sinner's prayer but we are told to confess with our mouths. And if we call out to God, we're saved. So mm -hmm. if that's not a prayer, I don't know what is. Mm -hmm. So yep. yeah, I, I, would, I, would, I would just simply say that, Lord Jesus, I want to change my life around. I want to turn away from all this horrible life that I've been living. And I want to come to know you and know your love as what these ladies in the podcast have been talking about. Please mm -hmm. come in and make me whole, make me new. Amen. 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 Then tell someone that you're mm -hmm. born again. 
and mm. that's it. Find a good Bible-based church that Sidonia had, had talked about at the start. Find a really good Bible-based church. If you're not starting to change, change your church because you're mm. in the wrong place. And mm -hmm. uh, if you want help about that too, we're here. We are here yeah. to help. Mm -hmm. We're here with Christian Women in the UK and my own ministry. I'm part of Christian Women in the UK as well, as so don't keep saying I'm one of the administrators. But I've also got my own ministry, Pearls of Grace Ministries, which is www.pogmuk.com. Mm -hmm. Get in touch with any one of us and we will gladly That's speak helpful. with you. Definitely, we will. Definitely. Yeah. Thank you very much, Giselle. Um, and let us close out in prayer. Mm -hmm. Our dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for um, the gift of eternal life through your son, Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord, because we're so undeserving of it. But yet in your um, wonderful, gracious mercy, you sent your son to die so that we, may, through him we may live. Um, and through him we have that living hope. Um, thank you for those who have come to know you know of you as their personal lord and savior and are um working um towards righteousness lord through the help of the holy spirit and um, lord we also want to commit those of our friends and family and neighbors and, and anybody else who might be listening to this who would like to know you more and um, lord help them to take that step to invite you into their lives lord help them to take that step to surrender it all to you that you might come into their lives, Lord, and they may know you um, as we do and find that joy and that peace that they're so desperately searching for out there in the world. Thank you, Lord, for another week. Thank you for all your mercies that we have enjoyed this week. We ask, Lord, that you please be with every single one of us as we go into the coming week. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Thank you, ladies. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, everyone, for listening. It's good night, everybody mm -hmm. in Facebook land. I'm going to stop mm -hmm. the Facebook feed. That's mm, that's Facebook stopped, and now I'm going to stop the uh, Zoom recording. So good night, everyone. Mm -hmm.